I'm sorry, Danny. Can you ever forgive me? Sometimes my impulses get me into trouble. What happened? It happened so fast. I signed Danny up to sing with me for the talent show. Veronica, seriously? Without even asking? Yeah. Don't you know that real friends don't throw their friends under the bus like that? I don't know what happened. I was writing her name on the sign-up sheet before I realized I did it. And maybe if she sings with me, I won't break out in hives again during the performance. I just wish you would have asked first. But I forgive you. That's what friends do. After all, no one is perfect. Well, Eli over here has been as perfect as a friend I could ask for. I've decided I don't need anything. Or anyone. Yeah, or anyone else. Well, I want to be the kind of friends to others the way Eli has been to you, Gray. I remember what it was like before I started making friends, and I don't wish that feeling of loneliness on anyone, not on my worst enemy. Do you really have enemies, Danny? Right. I mean, Veronica probably has quite a few, but not <laughs> you. Guys, I told her I'm sorry. <laughs> We're just teasing, babe. Yeah, and we only tease our real friends. Speaking of that, I'm glad Beach Club has allowed us all to get to know each other better. I don't think we would have become friends before, but I think you two are going to become good ones. I think the same of you and Eli. Hey, isn't it about time for Beach Club to start? Instead of making it a competition, what if we all go together? Uh, I don't know, V. I seem to recall something about the three musketeers, not four. I guess you're the odd person out. Come on, Eli. Give a break. I think we've teased V enough. Let's go, all four of us. And then they called me up to the stage, and my friend Michael grabbed me with this panda look on his face like, uh, Jason, man, I hate to tell you, but you got some something something on your team. That's a good friend right there. I think my friends would have let me go up there just to embarrass myself. I know, right? But the problem is I couldn't get the spinach out of my teeth. I wish I would have been there. You know, I carry dental floss with me everywhere I go. Of course you do, Jordan. <laughs> that doesn't surprise me at all. But it all worked out. I was able to get most of it out, so at least it wasn't noticeable anymore. <laughs> I wish I could have been there to see that happen. I'm not touching spinach, lettuce, collard greens, <laughs> nothing green from now on. Well, at least not before I speak. Hey, everyone, come on in and get a seat. Hey. Jason was just telling me about his last encounter getting spinach stuck in his teeth. <laughs> <laughs> OK, well, this week, we're going to talk about friendliness, friendship, and what it means to be a good friend. We define friendliness as knowing, liking, and accepting people just as they are. So, what do you think of when you hear the word friendliness? I, I think, think of, of Gray. Eli. Oh, <laughs> but what makes you guys such good friends? Well, Eli treats me like an equal, not someone with a disability. My bones are flat on the end and not round like everyone else, so it's always been hard to walk and stand up straight. That's why I use a wheelchair. But Eli doesn't care. He treats me the same as if nothing's different. Ah, that's so good. So what you're basically saying is that a friend sticks with you. I agree. Sticks with you like glue, no matter what. I remember when I moved here from Ohio, I didn't have any friends at all. Then I started coming to Beach Club and everything changed. I have a question. What is a way that you can think to show friendliness? It's one thing to have friends that you're comfortable with and stick with you. Like glue. Right, like glue. But what about those people that aren't really your friends? How can you show friendliness to them? Okay, let me give you some more insight. Close your eyes and think about your classroom or even the lunchroom. Can you think of someone who sticks to themselves or who always sits by themselves? I can think of a few people. Okay, I'm going to ask again then. What is a way that you can show friendliness to them? Maybe by including them in conversations I'm having? Right, being intentional about including them. Or inviting them to come eat lunch with me and my other friends? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Sometimes we love our friends so much we're in our own little world with them. But true friendliness is not only being a good friend to our current friends, but also making friends with others who aren't our best buds. We need to look for those people that need friends. Just like me last year. I think showing friendliness is also trying to understand how someone feels and being, uh, what's the word when you try to understand how someone feels? Empathetic. 
Yeah, empathetic. You're so good with words, Danny. <sighs> Thanks. Okay, I think we have a lot to think about, especially that we need to show friendliness not only just to our current friends, but to be on the lookout for those people who may not have any good friends. Hi everyone, Pastor Mark is back again. And I'm so excited to tell you about our Bible connection for this week because it focuses on one of my favorite things, being a good friend. Now God's word has so much to tell us about friendship, but this story is the true story about four friends who cared so much about their friend that they damaged the roof of a house like the one I'm in today so that they could find a way for their friend to meet Jesus. You can find our story in the book of Mark, Mark chapter 2. Now, Mark is the second book of the New Testament. It's on page 1073 in your kids' Beach Club Study Bible. Our story starts out with Jesus in the city of Capernaum. Jesus was preaching in a home. Huge crowds had gathered to hear Jesus so much that not one other person could fit in the room. Now that's where the four friends in our story come in. These four friends came to the house where Jesus was talking, carrying their friend who was paralyzed on a stretcher. They knew that Jesus did miracles and they had faith and believed that Jesus could not only heal their friend, but they also believed that the message Jesus preached was truth. But when the friends arrived at the home where Jesus was, they were told there was no more room for them. But these friends were persistent. They climbed up to the roof of the home, carrying their paralyzed friend. They wanted their friend to see Jesus so badly that they actually dug through the roof of the house to make an opening. The friends figured if Jesus couldn't see them because of the crowds, then they were going to make a way for their paralyzed friend to see Jesus. These four friends lowered their paralyzed friend down through that hole in the roof, right in front of Jesus. <laughs> the crowd inside was not happy at all, but Jesus knew the hearts and the real motives of the friends for taking this extreme action. When Jesus saw their faith, he told the paralyzed man, your sins are forgiven. When Jesus said those words, the teachers of the law who were trying to catch Jesus doing something wrong thought that they had finally caught them. They thought to themselves, how dare Jesus claim to do something only God can do, like heal sins. Jesus knew what they were thinking, even though they didn't say the words out loud. Then Jesus looked over at the teachers of the law and said, which is easier to say, your sins are forgiven or take up your bed and walk. Then Jesus looked at the rest of the crowd and said, you know I have the power to forgive sins. And then he said to the paralyzed man, get up, take up your bed and go home. Immediately, the paralyzed man got up and walked out. You bet, the crowd was amazed. They had never seen anything like this happen before. Can you even imagine how excited those four friends on the roof were to witness this miracle? The teachers of the law were right about one thing. Only God can forgive sins. What they failed to see is that Jesus was God standing right in front of them. It took a miracle for them to understand that Jesus is the Son of God. What will it take for you to believe this too? You know He has the power to forgive your sins, just like the paralyzed man. That's what it means to make Jesus your forever friend. You can admit you are a sinner and ask Jesus to forgive your sin and come into your life. Next, believe that Jesus is God's Son who came to earth to take the punishment for sin you deserve. Then, choose to follow Jesus by turning away from your sin and choosing God's way rather than your own way. Man, I want friends in my life like the friends in our story. 
friends who care so much about me that they'll do whatever it takes for me to know Jesus. Man, I love that story Pastor Mark just shared. Those four friends are the kind of friends you want to have, aren't they? I agree, and I couldn't help but think about my situation. I used to have more friends until my mom died. I think it kind of scared them off. Most of them just disappeared, except for Eli here. And I'm not going anywhere. I know it, but I was thinking, what if I had friends like those guys? Or better yet, what if the two of us tried to look for others who need friends in their lives? I mean, the two of us. Yep, we sure do know a thing or two about being good friends during the good and bad times. <laughs> I like how you're thinking, guys. Okay, does everyone have their Bibles? Now. Our memory link can be found in the book of John. As you're looking for them, just listen to me. John 15 and verse 15. John is the fourth book in the New Testament. You've got Matthew, Mark, Luke, and then John. You can find it in your Kids Beach Club Study Bible on page 1173. Does anyone need a little help from a friend? Got it. Almost there. I'm almost. Got it. Great. Nice. Got it. Today we're going to be focusing on memorizing the second half of the verse. We say John 15, 15, B. The B means that we're only going to be looking at the second half of the verse. Now, let's read it together before we memorize it. Ready? John 15, 15, B. I have called you friends for all things that I have heard from my Father, I have made known to you. John 15, 15, B. I'm not sure I understand what this verse means. Well, have you ever felt like an outsider? Like you didn't fit into a group because the people around you didn't share the inside jokes with you and you didn't know anything about them. That's exactly how I felt when I first moved here. And it's no fun, is it? No. Nope. Mm -mm. Well, today's memory link lets us know that we are not on the outside because Jesus doesn't keep any secrets from his friends. Jesus wants us to be in his circle and tells us everything he heard from his father and he has made known to us. Okay, are y'all ready to memorize? Yeah! Good, because today we're playing family, friend, or fun. In case you can't remember how to play, the rules are simple. In this bucket here are three categories of cards, family, friend, or fun. Yeah. So, if you pick a card that says family... Then we will all say the verse together. If you pick a card that says friend... You will pick one person to say the verse with you. And if you pick a card that says fun... My favorite, you will say the verse by yourself, but you'll say it in the character of what is written on the card. Jason, why don't you start us off? Let us begin. <laughs> it's fun. <laughs> John 15, 15, but <laughs> I have called you friends for all things that I've heard from my father I have made known to you. John 15, 15, but it's, it's a cowboy. It's a cowboy. <laughs> all right. Okay, Gray. Fun. Who's your friend to say the verse with? Eli. Nice. <laughs> John 15, 15, B. I have called you friends. For all the things that I heard from my Father, I have made known to you. John 15, 15, B. Nice. Why did you call me Ooh, I got fun. Oh. -ho. John 15, 15, B. For I have called you friends for all things that I heard from my Father, I have made known to you, John 15, 15, B. <laughs> Give us your oh, nose. Are you sick? A no. uh, really uh, bad I cold. A really uh, bad cold. Good job. Okay. Um, oh, no. Fun. Okay. John 15, 15, B. <laughs> I have called you friends for all the things I heard my father had made known to you. Jump 1515 B. <laughs> okay, it was a surfer. Oh, <laughs> wow, you said surf. You said surf up. The beach club. I got family. Alright. That's all of us. Ready? Yeah. Three, two, John 1515 B. I have called you friends for all things that I have heard from my father. Yeah, that was fun. Here you are, 
Danny. Are you still avoiding me? Are you sure you're not still mad? V, trust me, I'm not avoiding you. I'm just trying to get all my thoughts down on paper before I lose them. Whew, that's good. But listen, while we have a few minutes, will you practice with me? Please, we need to be sure we can do this. Maybe you should have been sure before you volunteered for the talent <laughs> show. Seriously, V, you do have a great voice. But I get hives. Just wear one of those high collared shirts. I'm sure no one will ever notice. The truth is, V, I'm scared to do this too. Singing is your thing. Writing is my thing. I'm going to sing with you because you signed me up. But I'm probably more nervous than you. Hey, I have an idea. You know how Jason was talking about friendship and being a good friend? Yes. Yeah. Um, I have a little feeling our little do what might get expanded. Oh, no. Mm -mm. <laughs> Absolutely not. Please, no, guys, no. we can show the rest of the school that all four of us, as different as we are, can be friends and support each other. No. As much as I want to support you, I'm going to have to decline. What he means is that we'll be happy to support you, V. But from the audience, like Danny said, this is your thing. <laughs> That's right, boys and girls, it's time for... Hey, hey, and now, here's our host, Steve Harley! Hey. Yes! All right, today's Make It Stick game is all Help, help a Friend Yes, all right, so here's how it works. First of all, we need one person to volunteer to be the friend in need. Who's going to do that? Who's going to who's going to? Put, see, okay, all right, right, all right, great, that's you. Now, the rest of you all will help each other out by answering the question. Each correct answer gives you a piece of rope. The game ends when you have enough rope to help your friend out. You got it? If you run out of questions before you help your friend out, Let's just say you don't want to be that person because a real friend does not let a, another friend stay stuck. A real friend does what? Help a friend out! All right, here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. Ready? Ray, will you take your position, please? Here we go. Question number one. What does friendliness mean? Um, knowing, liking, and accepting other people just the way they are. You get a piece of rope. Yes, you get a piece of rope. Your first piece of rope. Who's going to hold it? All right. Here we go. Next question. Why did the four friends take their paralyzed friend to Jesus? They had... Faith Jesus could make him walk? They had faith Jesus could help him walk? Yes, and I have faith that you could greet your friend if you keep answering these questions correctly because you want to... Help, help a friend out! Okay, let's see. Put a piece of tape to seal it. Let's go. Is that enough to help your friend out? No. no. All right, well, let's go to another question. Why couldn't the friends get into the house? I, know, I got a friend. Okay, oh. give it to me, please. Come on, I need a friend. Here we go. V, oh, um, because it was locked? It was locked. No, 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 no. Oh. It was full of people listening to Jesus. Oh, yeah, the yeah. friend helped you out. You get another rope. Okay, matter of fact, let me help you. Let me help you. Let me tie it. Let's go. Oh. <laughs> With the tape. Where's the tape? Hold the tape. 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 <laughs> Here we go. Here we go. Is that enough tape? I mean, is that enough Let's rope see. to help your friend? No! Oh, my goodness. We need another question. What solution did the friends find to get their paralyzed friend to Jesus? I know. What was the solution? They lowered him through a hole in the roof. They lowered him through the hole in the yeah. roof. Yes. Give me your rope, please. Mm. Take, please. 
Thank you, Eli. Thank you. You are a great taper helper router. Here we go. There you go, Eli. Is that enough friend? Enough no, rope come on, come to help on, your friend here. out? No. No, just Billy. All come right, on. we need another question. Run. Here we go. Question. You guys got this. What did Jesus say first to the paralyzed man? Son, your sins are forgiven? Son, your sins are forgiven. Ma'am, you got the correct answer. Yay! Let's see if this will be Yay! enough rope you for you to it. help a friend. Ah! Oh, let's see, Kate, please. <laughs> let's see if this is going to be it. Let's see if this will help your friend. Oh. Let's see what happens. Come on, come on. Here we go. Yeah. Will it help him? Will it help him? Will it help him? Can it reach him? Throw it to him. Throw it to him. Oh, let's see. What a pull him. Pull him. Pull him. Pull him. Oh, you did it. You did it. Hey, great job, guys. We'll see you next time on No Oh, hey there. You won. Man, it looks like y'all had another fun time in this Make It Stick game. We did. We played the Help a Friend Out game. That was so much fun. As much as I like the thrill of competing with the guys, I think I liked being on the same team just as much. Me too. It made me really feel connected. Like we were really helping each other. Um, speaking of helping a friend out, Jason, I think you got a little something something in your teeth. Oh, <laughs> That's again. a floss if you want. Oh, wow. thanks, Jordan. I'll pass on the floss, but just give me a second. Oh, so tell me, what was your favorite part about Beach Club this week? I really liked our Bible connection about the guys helping out his friend who was paralyzed. I was thinking the same thing. I really relied on you for a lot of stuff, but I liked how those guys had such a deep friendship that they cut a hole in the roof just so he could see Jesus. My favorite part was really just the feeling that I have now, like I'm finally fitting in part of a group. But Beach Club isn't just a group of friends having fun. I think it's more like, like a movement. Okay, Danny, I think I know what you mean, but can you explain that a little bit more? Sure. I think if we actually apply the things we learn in Beach Club to how we live, we can be the change. We can start a movement of change. You're right. When I was in Beach Club back back a hundred years ago, <laughs> <laughs> no gray, that would be Jason. <laughs> no, but seriously, it wasn't that long ago. And I remember how Beach Club challenged me to change how I was living and to live out the character words we were learning each week and to be the change, just like Danny said. That's good, we're almost out of time. So how's everybody doing with the Hang 10 Challenge? They're spending 10 minutes with God every single day. Now that I have my Bible from Great Treasure Day, I've been doing so much better. Last week I only missed two days. I'm still working on where I can put it in my routine. Yeah, me too. I understand. It's hard, and it gets harder the older you get and the busier you get. But the important thing is to make it a priority. That's so good. Danny, would you by chance to have any final words? You betcha I do. But I did something different this week. I wrote my poem from each of our perspectives. Mm -hmm. Can we each read a part? See, I haven't written where everyone starts. I think this is going to be good. Go for it. Friendliness by Danny. But really, it's by all of us. When V signs him up for the talent show, I made a choice to not let my gasket blow. <laughs> and I learned that friendliness involves asking first and not assuming my friends can be coerced. Mm. <laughs> I learned to take a chance and open my heart because when I do, new friendships will start. Nice. I learned that new friends don't threaten the old. They just make life richer. Richer than gold? Oh, come on, Danny. I know you had to make it rhyme, but I would never say that. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's true. Oh, no, maybe not. But you did learn that your friendship with Gray isn't threatened by including others, right? Yeah, I definitely did. Is that it, or is there more? No, there's a little bit more. Here, Jordan, this next line is for you. I learned that at work, I need to be on the lookout. People need friends without a doubt. 
and I need to always check the top and beneath because there may be something, something stuck in my teeth. <laughs> <laughs> Very good, Danny. I especially like that something something part. But seriously, I am so proud of you guys. You're getting it. And that's why Jason and I love volunteering at Beach Club so much. You can say that again, Jordan. Okay, we're out of time. So everyone bring it in. We're gonna break with friendliness on three. Ready? One, One two, three, friendliness! friendliness.